In this video, I'm going to teach you how to understand physics intuitively in a way you have never been taught in school. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, studied theoretical physics at Princeton University, but he quit doing physics after realizing that he just couldn't understand physics as intuitively as some of his classmates. Back in high school and college, I was just like some of his classmates. I could sometimes solve extremely complicated problems in split seconds in my head while most other people would take hours to solve it or wouldn't solve it at all. It's probably one of the reasons why I got into MIT in the end. How is this possible? Because solving a complicated physics problem, well, first requires you to understand the problem, then you have to express that problem in terms of formulas and mathematical equations, and then you have to go through the lengthy process of solving all of these mathematical equations so you eventually reach a result. Was I some kind of genius who could do all of this in split seconds in my head, while the brilliant Jeff Bezos couldn't? Well, of course not. I mean, there's a trick here, a cheat code that I'm gonna explain with an example. You're given a problem where you need to determine the initial velocity of a ball located here, flying through Earth's gravitational field so that it would pass through a ring horizontally located 14 meters away from you at a height of three meters. Assuming, of course, you can neglect air resistance, this problem isn't rocket science. You have to solve some equations of motions, do some math, and I think almost every first year college physics students would be able to solve it. However, if you add air resistance to this problem, all of a sudden it becomes so complicated that you would need some fancy numerical simulations on a computer to solve it. I think very few people would be able to solve it exactly. Nevertheless, here's a guy who can solve this exact problem in split seconds. That's around Harden and it obviously has worked because the Rockets have been one of the surprise teams. What a genius physicist, right? He must have solved all these complicated equations of motions and all the math in split seconds in his head. Well, obviously, he didn't actually solve the equations in his head, but without a doubt, he did find the almost exact solution actually within split seconds. This is how I was often able to solve these equations, using intuition. Some point, I got so good at it that I could almost feel the equations in my hands. Just like LeBron James has a feeling for the basketball, I could visualize them and understand equations as if they were some physical objects that I could touch. The big question now is, can you learn this as well? Or is this a skill limited to a few naturally born geniuses? Well, I wasn't born a genius. And I strongly, strongly doubt that I'm more intelligent than Jeff Bezos, who maybe despite not having the strongest intuition for physics, ended up becoming the richest man in the world. Leonard Susskind, one of the most well-known theoretical physicists in the world and professor at Stanford University, once said this in an interview about understanding physics intuitively. Well, what does intuitive mean? It means the ability to think about it with basic classical physics, the physics that, uh, that um, we evolved with uh, throwing stones, uh, splashing water, whatever it happens to be. Uh, quantum physics, general relativity, quantum field theory are deeply unintuitive in that way. It's true. The only part of physics that we can really understand intuitively is basically classical mechanics happening in three dimensions. This was all developed in the first six years of our lives, possibly even earlier than that, at a time when our brain was wired to understand the world around us. As a baby, you learn to understand the concepts of space and time. And around two months old, you learn to understand tracking moving objects, and you understand that if they're hidden, they don't just cease to exist. Next, you start learning about how objects move around, the concept of objects falling due to gravity when you let them go. You also start learning <laughs> The idea of friction when you hold a glass and it doesn't spill. The idea of solids and also liquids. And the idea of surface tension when you spill water and it forms little droplets. I spilled this on my socks. And you also learn about collisions, action, reaction, basically rediscover Newton's laws even though you don't explicitly know about them. It's a beautiful concept. We're all naturally born very curious to learn about the world around us. And part of this is just evolution wanting us to learn as children, while stakes are low, to make sure we have a higher likelihood of surviving when we become adults. As a child, I would often play around with Legos or in the woods, or I would try to build something in my uncle's wood shop. I'm convinced that all of this really helped me to build a natural intuition for nature and later helped me build a physics intuition. If you're struggling to understand physics intuitively, this does not mean that you don't have intuition for nature. On the very contrary, what this really means is that you just never learn to map these abstract physics problems to the intuitive understanding of the world around you that you surely have. Let that sink in for a moment. 
all of these abstract and complicated physics problems from classical mechanics all the way up to modern physics can be mapped to very simple problems such as objects colliding, something accelerating because the force is being applied to it, or just an object falling down. And you have a very natural intuition for all of these simple problems. It is extremely difficult, if not completely impossible, to natively rewire your brain to understand quantum mechanics or other modern physics problems. At least I can't do it. And the reason for this is because we have never played around with quantum objects. They're just so small. All we can really understand and see is our classical 3D world. And forget about imagining four or higher dimensional spaces. I bet you right now, you can't even imagine a 2D space. Go ahead, try it. Try imagining a 2D world. Do you see something? Well, whatever you're imagining right now, it's probably a 2D world that you're looking at from a third dimension. So basically like a 2D world embedded in a 3D world. And imagining anything higher than that is completely impossible. And if you can somehow imagine a two or four dimensional world, go ahead and write it in the comment section. I'm really curious to hear that. Well, Leonard Saskind, who was good friends with Richard Feynman, said this in a recent podcast. Me and many of my friends can think more easily quantum mechanically than we can classically. I just don't buy that. They may be way more intelligent than I am, but what I think they've become really good at is mapping quantum gravity, special relativity, or string theory onto simple classical mechanics problems, basically stuff that they've also learned just as babies. Now, how can you learn to do this? Listening to physics lectures or reading physics books is obviously great, but the only way, I repeat, the only way to actually develop a physical intuition is if you do a lot of problem solving practice. And while solving these problems is not so much about just finding the right answer, but rather about finding a way to map the original complicated problem onto a simple classical system, which you can imagine in your head, then thinking about how the simple classical system evolves in time which you can do with your intuition, and then just mapping this back onto the original problem, which may be as complicated as quantum mechanics. And by that, you should be able to understand how the quantum system will evolve in time, and you should have an idea at least of what the solution might look like. All you've got to do in most problems from basic classical mechanics all the way up to super advanced physics is just draw the potential energy function. You can pretend it's a real hill with a particle sliding in it, or if it's easier for you, you can just pretend it's a roller coaster. Here's an example in quantum mechanics that I just came up with. By the way, you shouldn't focus on the actual solution in the quantum mechanics. The idea here is to understand the problem-solving approach and how you map this complicated problem onto something classical and simple. I don't care if you're a high school student or a quantum mechanics PhD. The problem goes as follows. You're given some strange imaginary one-dimensional material, it might look something like this, and it produces an energy field that behaves as follows. V of x, equals x to the power of 4 minus 6x squared plus 2x plus 5. Why? Well, that was the first polynomial that Wolfram Alpha randomly generated. There is a particle inside here. Let's just draw it here as a little particle, quantum particle to be precise. And the total energy of it is zero. So that's like the kinetic plus potential energy add up to zero. And the question is, what is the probability that the particle is going to be located at x equals zero. And again, don't panic if you have no idea what is going on here, that's completely fine. Now, what a bad teacher would do in this case is they would start writing down, if it were a classical problem, the equations of motions, basically the F equals MA equations. But this is a quantum system, so we don't need this. Instead, in a quantum system, you would start with what is called the Schrodinger equation, or more precisely, the time independent Schrodinger equation, a lot of fancy words. It looks like this. Well, but we don't care about any fancy math. We want to be able to map this problem to something that a five-year-old could solve. And a five-year-old definitely wouldn't be able to handle a Schrodinger equation. So how do we do this? Well, the first step would be to plot the energy landscape. So let's start with that. So, a plot like this, even though it's not very pretty, is a good first step in visualizing something. However, the energy landscape on its own is still not something very intuitive. We don't intuitively understand energy. However, what if I told you that you can just imagine that this energy landscape is a real physical kind of hilly area? Or, if you want, you can imagine it's kind of a roller coaster and you're just riding a roller coaster on these curves. So, let's do that. Let's put a roller coaster on this. Okay, so this red little square over here is supposed to be a roller coaster. 
a great artist. And the idea of energy being zero essentially just means when it's at zero height as it is right now, that it's standing still, not moving. So now imagine if this was an actual roller coaster and you would start swinging this down, it would start accelerating down here, go really fast and it would slow down and stop here. And assuming there's no friction, it would just keep going back and forth and back and forth forever. The other option though is that the roller coaster might be placed over here with zero energy again, and it might be swinging around here, like back and forth, back and forth. But essentially, these are the only two places where it can be. And just by looking at this, you already know intuitively, even if you were a child, that there's no way for the roller coaster to just suddenly swing up here without you giving it an extra push, which means some extra energy. And just like that, we basically solved the problem. Because if the answer is that a roller coaster can't get up here, it can only be in this area or in this area, that essentially means, well, the quantum problem has the same solution. The probability of the roller coaster being at zero, or in this case, the quantum particle being at x equals zero, is precisely equal to zero. Obviously, if you know nothing about quantum mechanics, there was no way for you to know that you could map one of these problems into a roller coaster problem, but that's the whole point of learning physics. One little thing though is that not everything exactly translates. So for example, in quantum mechanics, in reality, it's obviously impossible for the roller coaster that is stuck down here to somehow get over here and being stuck there. While in quantum mechanics, there exists something called quantum tunneling, where a particle can actually get from this region through this kind of forbidden impossible region over here, something called quantum tunneling, but nothing for you to worry about at this point. These potential energy plots or energy landscapes as they're more commonly referred to are incredibly powerful. It's all about energy conservation. They appear over and over again, anything from classical physics all the way up to the most complicated modern physics. The really big mistake that almost everybody makes is focusing on too advanced problems too early on. If you watched my video on understanding math intuitively, you might remember my comparison between skills and tools. Every new math or physics formula that you learn is basically like a new tool in your toolkit. And if you learn a lot of advanced formulas, you basically got yourself a master set of tools. But they're all kind of useless because, let's face it, you have no idea how to use them. What you really need to focus on is the most basic tools, some basic Newton's equations, and maybe the intuition of a child. These are basically the hammers and the screwdrivers of modern physics. And as you just saw, I basically just solved a quantum mechanics problem by using nothing other than these tools. And once you master these basic tools, you can move on and add a new tool to your toolbox but always make sure to practice so much to become a pro at using these tools before adding a new one. You basically have to become excellent at mapping complicated physics problems to simple tools that you have in your toolbox. And that is what I call physical intuition. Now that was some good theory, but it is worth almost nothing without you actually putting it to practice. There exists a lot of great resources depending on your personal background, how much physics you know, and your personal way of studying. If you're either in college studying physics or maybe you're a super advanced high schooler, then the following resources are going to be great for you. If you're a little bit more into introductory stuff and don't wanna go so difficult so quickly, then skip ahead to this timestamp because there I'm gonna show you all the good stuff for beginners. If you're looking for a balanced approach between some theoretical physics, some experimental physics, and obviously some math behind the physics, then I strongly recommend MIT's introductory level physics lectures taught by Professor Walter Lewin. Walter Lewin is an absolute genius when it comes to teaching. I've never in my life seen someone teach with so much passion and effort. For this reason, I'm gonna treat you with a few interesting moments from one of his last lectures. And that way, you can demolish a building. I trust the conservation of mechanical energy for 100%. If I don't succeed in giving it zero speed, then this will be my last lecture. <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. If you're really into understanding theoretical physics intuitively, I highly recommend Professor Leonard Saskin's lectures from Stanford University. It's called The Theoretical Minimum. It's available online and it ranges from anything from classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, general relativity, cosmology, and if you're super into hardcore advanced stuff, you can even check out the supplemental courses including, well, the Higgs boson, entanglement, supersymmetry, string theory, and all sorts of crazy stuff that 
I certainly don't understand and I think worldwide very, very few people have ever understood. A little warning though about Leonard Susskind's lectures on the theoretical minimum, they are very theory focused. They're not gonna get you through your next exam. Their whole purpose is to walk you through theoretical physics in an intuitive way without excessive mathematics. If you're not really the person who likes online lectures and prefers either a physical book or reading some papers, then you should definitely check out the Feynman Lectures of Physics. Yes, as the name suggests, they were thought by the actual professor Richard Feynman, it's Caltech many years ago, it goes through mechanics, electromagnetism, and quantum mechanics. And yes, here's a picture that's Richard Feynman teaching them themselves. So they're super focused on intuition, so much in fact that some people say the lectures are a little bit hard to follow, but if you manage to do it, you're gonna develop a great intuition. And as I said, just listening to lectures, reading physics books isn't enough unless you actually convert this into problem-solving practice. Now, there are tons of resources online. One of my personal favorite is from a Soviet physicist called Irodov. He has lots of amazing problems, and the most important part around it is that the book has so many extensively worked out solutions in video forums and forums online, you can always find support for that. I'm gonna put a link in the description. And other than that, you can also check out either the American Physics Olympiad problems, ranging from very simple to super hard, or if you prefer something in your local language, for example in Germany, or in any other country really, you can find your local physics competitions. They're part of the qualifications for the International Physics Olympiad. They can sometimes be absolutely amazing with very detailed and step-by-step -step solutions. If your understanding of physics is a bit more basic and you've never taken any college-level physics, that's totally fine because there are tons of great resources out there for you. However, sadly, very few of them are actual school textbooks. One of my favorite platforms who are great for learning physics and science intuitively is Brilliant.org, who kindly agreed to sponsor this video. If you don't know yet, Brilliant is an amazing platform to learn math, programming, and science in general very intuitively and interactively, ranging from very beginner's levels all the way up to advanced. I highly recommend checking out their lecture series on scientific thinking and advanced physics. For example, you can check out their course on electricity and magnetism, hop over to, for example, what is Coulomb's law, you'll be able to walk through step by step a whole explanation of the history of it, over to very interesting questions that allow you to really intuitively understand what is going on going through concrete examples. Their lecture is also full of interactive animations such as these ones over here that allow you to play around with the problems and really get an intuitive understanding for what is going on. If this course or any other caught your eye, you can check them out free of charge for 30 days and the first 200 of you who sign up get a 20% discount from the annual subscription by visiting brilliant.org slash Samuel Bosch. And with that, I want to thank Brilliant for supporting me and I encourage you to use the comment section down below as a discussion forum to talk about all the great resources that you found. And if you learned something new in this video, you can thank me by subscribing to my channel, turning on the notifications and giving me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.